Okay, so for lab two, what you're going to be investigating is static friction. And I think what you're going to be looking for is like the static, the coefficient of static friction between two objects. For the lab, you're going to need um, some sort of object. Um, you're going to have to be able to get the mass of this. So if you have a scale at home or, you know, we can figure it out. Uh, just reach out if you have trouble with that. And um, some kind of solid, like board or a... Uh, uh, you can use anything, a table, anything that, anything that you can pick up and move like this. Okay, so remember static friction keeps things in place. It tries to. So if I raise this up a little, you can see the block stays there. That's because static friction is holding this way. The force of gravity is kind of pulling it in this direction. But if I raise it up enough, it will break free. So right there, I've, 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 I've gone past the maximum friction. And so what you're going to want to find is based on when it releases, what's the angle right here? You're going to need that angle. And you can do that by finding the x component and the y component, the height, so how far. And then you can use trig to figure out what that angle is. And once you get that, then you use your force diagram uh, to figure out the, the static friction force. And then um, you can use that to find the coefficient. So you'll do this multiple times, just raising it very slowly until it finally breaks free. Get the angle, and that will be your analysis. So pretty simple lab. Uh, it's mostly going to be in the analysis afterwards with the force diagrams and stuff. So one, one way you can um, get your measurements is using the video analysis in Capstone, which is what we did last time. So I've set this up. I've recorded, you know, this is the recording of the video that you just watched. Um, and say, like, I set this. Remember, you got you to gotta set something so that you know the scale. Because the, 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 one of the problems you're going to have is trying to determine how high it is when you actually release it. Uh, especially if you're doing this by yourself. Um, so if you just record it, then you can use the video analysis. So what I did is I just put a, I marked the object like the center of mass. Um, and I used the, I put the origin right here, but you can see over on this, if I do the Y position, I can see the position um, at this point. I think it will coordinates. So it's at 0.23 meters. So that's the height. Um, and then you also need the X. So for this one, um, what I should have done is lifted it from this side so that the ramp was coming this way um, and then put the origin at the bottom because then I could get the X value because uh, right now the X is zero. But um, yeah, so I would probably flip this around like if I moved it again, I would if I did this again, I would record it so that it's sliding to the left. But um, let me see if we flip it around. And then if I put the origin here, okay, so the origin is pretty sure I put it there. Oh, yeah. Man, this is crazy. Okay. Okay, there, and then we'll slide the whole thing over. To here. So now I can see, see it, now I get a negative value for the Y. Uh, but that's fine. That's 0.22. And then you can also just change it and then get the X. So there's my X value. Which would be, uh, if I click on, if I right click, no, I click and then hit the, so it's at 0.41 meters. So that would be 0.41 and 0.2. And then you can use trig to get that angle. All right, so just to help you out getting the measurements if you're doing it by yourself. And then one last uh, tip just to help you out. Um, what you're doing is you're, you're trying to find the coefficient of static friction. And so basically what you're doing is you're finding the point, the angle theta at which this object breaks free. Uh, and so to analyze it, you need to have your force diagram So that would be the force of gravity. And then you're going to have static friction acting this way and the normal force coming up. Okay. So this is, this is kind of your setup for your force diagram. And what we're doing is as, as you start increasing the angle, what you're increasing is this force right there, that, that little piece of the gravity that's increasing. You're getting more and more and more until this reaches that the maximum. Uh, and the maximum static friction 
is given this is the max. If we want the max, we set it equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. And what we're looking for is the coefficient. So the coefficient of static friction would be the static friction force divided by the normal. So you have to figure out the normal, you have to figure out the static friction, but what we're doing is we're, we're imagining it, so it's gonna break free, but right at that point, this force here, the force of G in the X direction, you know, remember X is down the ramp. This force is equal to that force. So we could get that by using the angle theta. And then you'll take that and that goes in for the force of static friction. Your normal force is equal to this one over here. That's the force of G and the Y. So with that, then you can figure out the coefficient of static friction. <clears throat> Remember, you got to do it multiple times though. Okay. So you're going to, you're going to run at least five trials of calculating, uh, you know, that distance and the distance and height to get the angle and then plug everything into your equation.